Welcome to another comment response video. You can skip to a topic using the timestamps below. If you have any questions for a future video, you can leave them in the comments. Everything the Drug Classroom does is supported exclusively by donations. Listeners like you make TDC possible. If you want to help out, please consider supporting on Patreon. I've noticed the structure of DEET is very similar to cathinone. Could you do something about that? I can see the structural similarity you're referring to. However, they have some very significant differences. DEET isn't a phenethylamine, much less an amphetamine, and obviously the effects are quite distinct. DEET functions as an insect repellent, something cathinone isn't used for, and its toxicity is substantially different from cathinone. This is an example of structures appearing similar on the surface, but being functionally different to a significant degree. I always hate the 18-year-old thing. 21 is a much safer age, given that's around when the brain is finished developing. There are a couple things I want to address here. First, the brain development you're referring to ends more around 25 than 21. Second, this entire topic primarily has an indirect connection to drug safety. Using something at 18, for example, doesn't necessarily mean your brain is more vulnerable to damage. That's not really what concerns me about teens and young adults using drugs. Rather, the region of the brain that's still being developed is the prefrontal cortex. This region region is vital for decision making and impulse control, among other complex cognitive functions. Young people are often less capable of regulating their behavior for this reason. Your limbic system and motivational brain regions are running at full force, yet the part of your brain that carefully considers risks and benefits is not. When I'm talking with young people, this is always a concern of mine. They're capable of using drugs in an acceptably safe way, but I know they may not internalize and evaluate the risks as I'd want them to. Another issue is addiction, which may appear more easily during those early years, and it might become more fixed than if drug addiction starts later. There's also some evidence that certain forms of chronic use may have greater connections to psychological and cognitive issues if your use starts before 16 and 18. As a whole, this means drugs could still be used safely at a young age, but the cultural factors that make drugs safer are missing, such as drugs being well integrated into society. In many cases, I encourage delaying drug use unless it's medically needed. What is more neurotoxic, MDMA and analogs or LSD and analogs? The short answer is MDMA, MDA, and maybe similar drugs. The long answer is that we're still trying to understand MDMA's alleged toxicity. It's not totally clear if the changes at relevant doses in animals are actually signs of classic neurotoxicity, but it is the case that abusing MDMA could lead to persistent changes in the serotonin system. So, this so-called toxicity is indeed a concern. LSD and related drugs, on the other hand, really don't come with the same neurotoxic risks. We've yet to have studies suggesting psychedelics are a problem from that perspective, which at least partly makes sense given their pharmacology. It's yet to be seen if problems like HPPD are signs of toxicity or dysregulation. There is a possibility that they could be, but overall, classic psychedelics come with fewer so-called neurotoxicity risks than MDMA any similarities between crack cocaine and methamphetamine. They seem to be similar with their effects. They're both powerful stimulants, but they have notable differences. Although they're relying on the same basic monoamine systems, such as dopamine and norepinephrine, they alter those systems in different ways. A key part of methamphetamine's activity is that it increases the release of monoamines, while cocaine blocks their reuptake. Cocaine also has some other properties that could make it somewhat riskier for the cardiovascular system. Among those properties is its ability to interfere with ion channels. Crack cocaine is essential just cocaine. They offer the same dynamic effects in the body, but since different routes of administration are involved, the pharmacokinetics will differ, allowing inhaled cocaine to feel moderately different from intranasal cocaine. Cocaine also doesn't last as long as methamphetamine, so people often redose more frequently. All in all, both are euphoric stimulants, and they overlap in many ways when it comes to their acute safety. Seth, I love your channel, but I've got a question for you. Do you think doing psychedelics contributes to schizophrenia or causes schizophrenia? 
We definitely do not have good research in this area. One of the few drugs that's been identified as a likely risk factor for psychotic disorders is cannabis. Even that connection is controversial and will only apply to a small portion of users. For psychedelics, we really don't know. I'd say it's best to hold out on using them as long as you can and to avoid them if you're showing signs of a mental disturbance. Those signs could be as simple as anxiety or depression, both of which can be included in the prodromal phase of schizophrenia. Another thing to look out for are declines in mental performance or decision-making capacity, specifically when those declines don't have another apparent cause. In any of those cases, I'd caution against taking psychedelics. When someone is in an at-risk mental state, I think they could definitely be a risk factor. But in someone who does not have genetic, environmental, and life history risk factors, psychedelics are unlikely to be the source of a psychotic disorder. Of course, you don't necessarily know your risk factors, so the most you can do is pay attention to family history and your own mental state. If you already don't feel right, psychedelics aren't the thing you should add to the equation. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. You can also reach me via email at seth at the drug And if you want to support TDC, please do so on Patreon.